Hey everybody, I'm Nate from your Clarksville campus. Thanks for checking out today's Devo from Luke chapter two. Do you remember what Christmas was like as a kid? For some, the season is a painful reminder, but what I remember the most is the anticipation of the moment. That's what Christmas should represent. Christmas was meant to be a season of remembrance when God revealed his glory through his promised hope. The Israelites, they had waited for generations for a promise that would usher redemption into the world. And after centuries, suddenly an angel showed up in a field. Why? To tell the shepherds God's glory had come. The promise of hope was born and they responded just like you and I would. They were afraid. Have you ever had a promise fulfilled in a surprising way? Did it freak you out? That's what happened to the shepherds. And this is what Luke said about it in Luke chapter two, verse 10. But the angel reassured them. It's like, pick your job off the floor, boys. This is actually happening. Don't be afraid, the angel said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The good news was the promise fulfilled. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Like fear was out, joy was in, and God did it. His promised redemption had come through the birth of his glory, peace, and favor. The perfect gift. Now gifts are my love language. I love getting gifts. And I like a good surprise sometimes, but there's nothing better, absolutely nothing better than the anticipation of expectation. It's the promise of knowing something great is coming. When the shepherds were met by that angel, they knew someone great had come. The glory, peace, and favor of God made manifest. Jesus was the culmination of their hope for those shepherds in the field and for you and I today. Not because of what we did or what we can do, but all because of what God did. So what do you and I do with that? First, we accept it. God is at work in your life for his glory. That is the gift of hope-fueled grace. And as you mature in the promise of God, you should begin to want to give it away. Now, as much as I love getting gifts, as I've gotten older, I love giving them so much more. It took years before I was able to wait until Christmas to give Jamie her gift. Now with my kids, it's way worse. The anticipation I have for that moment is so big. It's the expectation I have for how much we will enjoy the gift together. That's just huge. Well, God meant his promise of hope to be for us. So he came to be with us, but it's about him. And hope is what happens when, you, when your heart encounters the glory, peace, and favor of God. Because hope is meant to be given. We're rivers, not reservoirs. We don't hold it up and hoard it up and hold it back. The people of God are meant to be beacons of hope in a hard world. So how can we bring God's promise of hope into other people's lives? God drew near by sending Jesus. Maybe someone in your life has been praying for God to draw near. What if he is sending them you? You're not their hope, but if you're living in the hope of the Lord, you should be able to share it with them. What does that look like? I think it looks a lot like a couple of shepherds standing in a field. It looks like people being faithful where God put them. It means anticipating your opportunity. Your opportunity to share God's promise of hope is coming. Be faithful where you are. Don't be afraid, be expecting. And when the anticipated opportunity arrives, what do you do? Keep being faithful. Do what you've been doing already, but do it for someone else. Share what hope has done in you. Maybe it's a smile, maybe it's a gesture. It could be an explanation, a prayer, an offer to help. It could be an actual, tangible gift. Small things make big moves when hope is at work. And anytime you bring out what God has done in your life, you pull back the curtain on his promise. You point people toward hope. You share in the good news, the joy of Jesus, the glory, peace, and favor of God, the promise of hope. Amen.